Good morning, dear participants. <clears throat> it is my pleasure to come in the Himalayan good place to and deliver and add some resources, whatever could be possible during my presentation. We are all law enforcement officers, as we know, and handling the criminal laws, we should be very cautious in handling such laws. The criminal laws deserves conviction and once you, you succeed in the conviction of a crime, so you need to have some process which is absolutely on the statutes. We cannot move an inch away from the statutes when we handle the criminal laws. In every act of the state or the union, you will find section 2 delivers the definition. The definition will be such that means you have to activate yourself according to the definition of the handling of the cases. Friends, it is pertinent to mention that there are differences between criminal law and civil law. Civil law is not that deterrent compared to criminal law. We, the police officers, customs officers, narcotic officers, and other law enforcement officers who de deals in criminology, they have to abide by letter by letter of the definition and the statutes. As we know, that there are process in investigation and investigation means the finding of facts. Now investigation in terms of Customs Act, in investigation in terms of Criminal Procedure Court, investigation in terms of any other laws in force has to be performed, has to be done meticulously with the target of evidence collection. Now evidence collection, what do you mean by evidence? Evidence is nothing but a document. And there are two items. One is oral evidence, another is documentary evidence. Now when we talk about oral evidence, there's a process of admission in the court of law. And when we talk about documentary evidence, what is documents? That is one of the most important factors in the criminal investigation. Just to tell you exactly the word by word, the letter by letter of the documents, I'll just quote the book. It will be available in the net as well as in the Indian Evidence Act. Document shall be, shall include any matter written, expressed or described upon any substance by means of letter or figures or marks or by more than one of these means which is intended to be used or which may be used for the purpose of recording that matter. Very importantly placed, documents. You will find by and by during my presentation, the much emphasis is given on documents. And when you really talk about nuances of electronic evidence, you will find that electronic evidence, as of today, there is no definite statutes. 
but we take care of Indian Evidence Act, we take care of CRPC, we take care of Indian Penal Code and other allied acts. So, the first session of mine is nonsense of electronic evidence. As I said, the evidence are two kinds, oral and documentary. And once I say document, oral means you know that you ask, interrogate, investigate, record statements, record statements of witness, record statement of suspect, record statement of accused, and according to the law, you have to handle and record the evidences, oral evidence, in terms of summons, in terms of production, or whatever. But when you talk about documentary evidence, we'll have to go as per the de definition of documents under the Indian Evidence Act. And there is definite information that so far as the electronic evidence is concerned, that is one of the priority throughout the world. You must be handling cyber crimes. You and me are involved. When I say you and me are involved, I can just tell you one thing. The other day, one of my relatives, he's aged around 70, he received a phone call from an electricity company stating that your connections will be withdrawn if you don't pay 19 rupees 80 paisa which was balanced to be paid and the last time is just 12 midnight tonight. He received that phone call in his mobile and then old man is a teacher by profession working in a college. He doesn't have any enforcement chapters, enforcement knowledge. He just said, Are bhai, cheek hai. such a small amount, why not deposit it? Then the caller, mind it, they have completely used the website of the CESC, Electricity Supply Board. And then he, he has, he found that it's authentic and such a meager amount, why not pay? As soon as he paid, I mean, I wanted to uh, put in the e uh, process, he found that 80,000 rupees was withdrawn from his bank account. And immediately he called me in, the, in my mobile and he said, that this has happened. I said, what, what, what time? He said, just about 15 minutes back. Then fortunately, I could see the process of banking, ISBM, International System of Banking, and by which I have processed in my uh, activity, and he could save 50,000 rupees, but 30,000 rupees have already been gone. So question is not even me, question is total, it's a social work. Policing, because if in our country, mind it, when I talk about cyber crime, we are second in the world. USA was the first and India becoming the second in the fraud so analysis. So friend, when we talk about electronic evidence, it pertains to information imbibed out of electronic process. Well, we being the police officers, we are not much acquainted with the system of forensic science. The examination of computer, I mean, digital uh, devices. There, I have put up certain slides 
by which I wanted, I tried to just give you an idea what should be the process and what we should do as in layman towards forensic examination of digital devices. So this is the background and then being the enforcement officer, what is investigation, what is search, what is seizure? Search and seizure basically is against the fundamental right bestowed on the citizens of India. Article 20, Article 21, fundamental rights. You are arresting a person. We are trying to curtail the rights of the citizen. But it is available under the statutes. When it is available and why it is available under the statutes? Because to see that there is no crime takes place. The law and order situation of the country is the priority of any country. And basically, the background of this activity of digital science or whatever you say, cyber crime, these, that and all, it's all UN conventions, United States Convention, I mean United Nations Convention. And we, India, one of the very important participants of United Nations. <coughs> and by which uh, we have to make our status accordingly as per the international agreements. And according to the international agreements, as you know, UN Convention on Arms, UN Conventions on Narcotic Drugs, UN Conventions on any other activities. And according to that, every participating country and the states of those countries has to see that the crime is reduced. And under this condition, we have different expectations from other countries also and accordingly there, will, there could be in future, so far the nuances of electronic evidence, I am sure that very soon we are going to get some sort of handles from international body. Because as you know in the media, even in the newspaper system, we have lot of frauds, take, frauds are taking place and the person behind this mostly staying outside the country. Because they are out of the reach of the conviction. That is, that is one thing very certain. So under this, why I am just interested to tell you these factors? Because I beginning, I told you that we are handling the criminal laws of the country where convictions are there. But when you handle digital devices, particularly the electronic evidence, as on today, we don't have much statutory provisions. And to say, to tell you that, very recently, <coughs> Read petition number 395-2022. There, Foundation for Media Professionals versus Union of India respondent. Now, in this particular case, the Honorable Justice K. M. Joseph and Honorable Justice Rishikesh Roy, the final judgment is still pending. Because how we can get the password 
which is subject matter of the individual. How can the law enforcement officer pressurize a person asking for the password or asking for opening of his device to get hold of the documentary evidence which otherwise as per the Indian Evidence Act we could assert that <coughs> electronic evidence is part of the documents. But asking for opening and retrieving the documents which is available in that electronic device, we don't have much power. So according to that, because since we study this position, I am sure that we are going to have very soon some power which could be bestowed under the statutes of the country. But till then, let me just show you a glance of these slides by which you will understand the whole process of electronic evidences. The definition is very simple. The term electronic evidence signifies, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay signifies a piece of evidence generated by some mechanical or electronic processes which is often relevant in proving or disproving a fact in issue. The information that constitutes the evidence <coughs> before the court, <coughs> it is commonly known as digital evidence. <coughs> this is what the subject, digital evidence. It is invisible. It can easily be altered. You know, we are handling the laptop, we are handling the information, <coughs> we are handling the WhatsApp. So this is purely between the delivery point and receive point. That the person both receive and Deliver caller and callee. Now, caller and callee, in what way they talk, in what way they put up in the devices, it is known by them. So, asking or forcing them to open up the device is a matter questioned in the against the fundamental rights, which is still sub -judice. But so long <coughs> it is not settled, it is not activated in the statutes. Fortunately, because of importance of the electronic device, the off late some court in a judgment, I will tell you the judgment, just quote it is available in the net also. <coughs> there they said that interim guidelines to be handled by the law enforcement agencies safeguarding the privacy of the citizens of India. <coughs> what way we can safeguard? The case between foundation of media professionals, there the interim guideline was provided by the Supreme Court of India and that is there in my slides also, I will just tell you, show you. <coughs> Basically, they said that suppose you wanted certain information received from my digital devices. <coughs> it should be like, you know, as you know, under the criminal procedure code, there is a cognizable offence, there is non-cognizable offence. And cognizable offence, you can go ahead without warrant. So, 
suppose you are your reasons to believe that you are trying to get hold of the information which is which may be available in the electronic device in a case initiated being the cognizable offense <coughs> you can force without warrant <coughs> and get the person arrested i just modify this just about 48 hours observation of the supreme court mind it no one has to be very updated in the information as i said that criminal technology the crime handling officers has to be updated even a minute yeah you are arresting a person just now the 48 hours back the constitutional bench of supreme court has ordered that though you are making an fir <coughs> for a just for i mean you are trying to inquire on the basis of an fir being a cognizable offense <coughs> supreme court constitutional bench just 48 hours or 3 4 days back gave a order gave an order that even if the fir the complainant said that it's a case of cognizable offense you cannot register the fir without doing a preliminary inquiry suppose you go and arrest a person right now according to your fir it will be a contempt of court mind it so you should be very very careful what the supreme court has observed <coughs> no electronic evidence chapter 4 of evidence act <coughs> i just noted this just to deliver before your participants CRPC there are three, three FIR section 154 of the uh, CRPC indicated that a person has come before you making a complaint for cognizable offence you are bound to receive that make an FIR if you don't accept registration of the fir then he can he could go to the magistrate he, he could first step he could go to a superior officer if if he does not achieve any result from the superior officer according to the law he can go to magistrate and magistrate will allow either allow registration of fir or medical law after his examination of the case records or whatever complaints now <coughs> recent judgment they said <coughs> the magistrate in terms of 154 of the crpc is not authorized to give order in terms of 1543 of the crpc <coughs> because this is pre enquiry stage 
154.3 will be applicable <coughs> only it's a post inquiry court's order. <coughs> so magistrate, the police officer <coughs> has not exceeded registration of the FIR in cognizable cases. <coughs> he has gone to the magistrate for order. It was available in 154.3. <coughs> Very recent judgment indicated that 154 subsection 3 does not provide the magistrate to give order of inquiry. Because observing, the court has observed that it is a pre-enquiry stage. Registration of FIR 154 activity is pre-enquiry stage. And that 154.3 order as they are in magistrate's order that should be order under section 165 or 173 of the CRPC. In some cases, 190, section 90's case, all sorts are there. there. So, question to sum up is that <coughs> once you register the FIR and if And if, even if it is a cognizable case, FIR, the latest Supreme Court judgment is that you have to have preliminary inquiry, <coughs> then allow the complainant to register his information. <coughs> and mind it, Supreme Court constitutional bench has ob kindly observed that this is <coughs> the order is there that they must do preliminary inquiry and that preliminary inquiry should not happen should not as a time bound case it should complete within seven days of the complainants uh, I mean uh, coming to the police officer <coughs> so seven days. Now suppose and even if they observe that even if the preliminary inquiry could not be completed within seven days <coughs> indicating reasons to believe of non-completion of preliminary inquiry after recording the same in the case diary it could be extended for certain more days. That's all. So at this juncture of today's lecture, I can very well modify what was there in my slides or maybe in the slide that you are bound to register the FIR. I mean, once you, file, I mean, once you register the FIR in the cognizable case, you can go and arrest the person. No. <clears throat> that will be violation and contempt of court. <clears throat> so basic background is kindly go through the statutes, kindly go through that because in India or anywhere in the world the apex court's order is the statutory order and is the law of the country. So friend, with this understanding let me move on. <clears throat> so where is electronic evidence found? We all know. <coughs> These are the material <coughs> where normally electronic evidences are available. Like desktop computer, laptop computer, servers, USB devices, CD, floppy disk, <coughs> backup devices. So many, so many, so many all are known to you.
and most important one is internet and cloud storage. Now here, let me show you the slide, then it will be okay. <clears throat> Electronic evidence plays a larger role in criminal investigation. Now here, process of acquisition, authentication and legal admissibility of the information stored therein requires correct handling, correct custodial custody. Like as you know, there is a process. <clears throat> At this stage, let me tell you something. There are certain statutes of the Union of India in, in India. We have like Customs Act. <clears throat> In the Customs Act, section 138, very nicely placed, section 138 have said that electronic information available in the electronic device has to be proved, <coughs> has to be handled, has to be seized in terms of the following orders 138c of the customs act has nicely said outlining what the seizing officer has to perform while seizing the electronic information available in the electronic device <coughs> You being the Sikkim state police officer, there could be a question, sir, how I am empowered? <clears throat> if you look at the definition of the conviction, defini definition of CRPC, in every provisions of the law, there is one sentence added, <clears throat> any other law for the time being in force. So when it is there, any other law for the time being in force, in absence of any law in your own statute, I can take care of the other statutes which are available in the Indian perspective. Mind it. So any other law for the time being in force is very importantly placed in any criminal investigation. <clears throat> now here, acquisition of such electronic information needs a sort of expert's opinion, expert's examination. Now you asked about, <coughs> in your slide, you have said cloud. Even if <clears throat> I say that I am ex-customs officer, if you ask me a question, what is cloud? I'll say, sorry, I don't know. Who is going to give me aid? The forensic expert. So, the question is, when you try to collect the electronic evidence, get hold of the opinion of the expert, and that opinion <coughs> is available <coughs> as per the law of the country. That I will show you the slide. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. <coughs> A process that tracks the movement of evidence through its collection, safeguarding, analysis, life cycle, by documenting each person who handled the evidence, the date, time it was collected, transferred, and purpose for any transfers. That's very important. That means, <clears throat> normally, when we talk about disposal of the case, case, disposal of goods seized, or disposal of articles seized, or even in the matter of investigation, even in the matter of putting the, your seized goods as a point of exhibit in the court of law, what could be the flowchart? 
how it should be handled. The process is very much there in the how to handle the electronic device and there <coughs> for the time being we could get hold of the process, the interim guidelines as directed by the Supreme Court. <coughs> admissibility before court, admit. what is admissibility? <coughs> That's very important. How do you say admissibility? That means court has to admit that your exhibit as an evidence without any doubt is absolute admissibility. Now admissibility, <coughs> here I, to, I ask you about the Honorable Justice K. Jos uh, Joseph's uh, observation. They said that to protect the privacy of the individual, if an individual refuses to give you and open the device to collect the electronic evidence <coughs> without warrant, no law enforcing agency can force. It should be warrant even if <coughs> it's a process of cognizable offense. <coughs> Why? And why court has said that uh, you have to get the, uh, what do you call, direction of the court that is warrant. Why warrant? And mind it, in the interim guidelines, it has been quoted that guidelines should be that <coughs> the person who is holding that electronic evidence, his own reporting his own informations which are available in the same device how to handle those informations if those informations pertaining to against the privacy of an individual the law enforcing agency has to take care and avoid communicating to any other agency when he collects such information, getting password from the individual person. This is one of the guidelines. That means, <clears throat> so long the matter is totally observed and directed by the constitutional bench of the country, the interim guidelines provided. Why provided? Because the priority is investigation and contending the crimes of the country. I cannot sleep till the order comes up from the court. I have to collect the electronic evidence right now to have a follow-up activity to contain the criminal activity of the country. Mind it. And that is why the court has given an interim order. So importance of electronic evidence has been taken care by the entire country, mind it. Because privacy is there definitely. Because uh, in, in terms of uh, Information uh, Technology Act 2000, Information Technology Act 2000 has definitely said that you have to provide the information available in the device. But there is no guideline here Against that particular act, the media personnel or so many uh, petitioner has gone to Supreme Court against the privacy. Like you must be aware in the very recent judgment, recent observed, I mean case <coughs> of where the uh, uh, Hollywood personnel, Hollywood cinema artists were caught with some uh, uh, narcotic drugs. The evidence, I mean, I, I was not involved in the case, but as per the media observation, media reporting, I could gather that the basic information was from WhatsApp. Because the 
the person who are, who are involved in that particular who are involved in that particular case they actually collected the narcotic drugs from the supplier through a whatsapp message mind it and whatsapp message becoming the electronic evidence to arrest though so many persons of i mean celebrity mind it so you can understand the importance of electronic evidence in the criminal technology as on today it's fast moving <coughs> when he joined in the department <coughs> in 60s i can tell you <coughs> what well, i was we were examining the paper documents to see the forgeries <coughs> investigating inquiry and just examining the documents now documents everywhere there is a <coughs> electronic process of clearance particularly in the international trade the basic department of mine customs all processes are all on the computer in the edi electronic data interchange process so information available under sanchit s a n c h i t sanchit process indicated that the importer exporter the stakeholder need not come to the department for the clearance of goods they can sit down in their house and in the electronic process they can pass on the documentation declaration and they can get the goods delivered in their house so with this understanding of the trade development if you are still sleep on electronic evidences sorry as a law enforcing officer my hands are tied so friend with this process pop now here what is what to do examination training law enforcement agency has to be trained from the forensic act examination so far as the electronic evidence is concerned <coughs> oral evi two type of evidence i discuss the oral evidence and documented general rules admissibility authenticity completeness reliability and believability <coughs> these words are very important words in the matter of inquiry investigation particularly interrogation examination of the person a person is throwing something to you you are examining you are interrogating he has come forward and giving you some uh, statement you being a law enforcing agency you have to be very much careful that whether his statement needs some corroboration that's very important to get the statement to get his answer admissible in the court i have to collect that evidence that is important <coughs> and in the electronic evidence particularly it's a, it's not a physical uh, i mean evidence is an evidence which is not shown in public physical appearance hai nahi uska <coughs> sources of internet based stand alone computer mobile devices you know this last evening <coughs> my mobile phone indicated that there is zero the battery is discharged completely i was communicating with my one friend and just all on a sudden stopped and i did not have <clears throat> the number of his and that is not available and i was not very savvy in my handling of the electronic device i could not place i mean do anything i have to keep quiet then i have to go out take care of another person's mobile just to tell him that my mobile is wrong so don't i mean this is this has happened mind it 
This happened. And my dear friend, when the process is available in towards the training, I'll advise the departmental officers to get hold of the personnel and let them understand, let them be trained about the information, how to revive, how to imbibe the information in the criminal, criminal uh, investigation from the electronic devices. <clears throat> there are, I mean, every investigation, I mean, uh, I can just modify my uh, statement because, uh, sorry to tell you, I am facing officials of the state and I have noticed the Sikkim government gadget. <clears throat> uh, there, the arrest, everything is there. You abide by, definitely you should abide by this. But <clears throat> most of my deliberation is on the process of Union of India statutes. But it is, similarity is 100%. There is no uh, ambiguity on that. But my slides could be understood taking care of your state act. Please, that I must modify before you. Okay? But one thing is certain, so far as narcotics are concerned, so far as investigation is concerned, is absolutely same and as per the statutes available in the CRPC. You go and search under the under uh, this uh, act, but the process procedure you have to apply as per the Criminal Procedure Code, 1973, effective from 1974, April 74. Why I say effective? Because every act has to have notification after approval of the parliament of the country. So once the select committee will bless the act, that is the date is 1973, but once it is passed and notified, and it will be come into force from that day, okay? That is why <coughs> in every act, <coughs> a warrant is a legal document that is issued by a judge or magistrate authorizing police officer to make arrest, search, seizure, seize properties and take action. That is warrant. When I handle the electronic device information, the magistrate has to pass an warrant after examining in totality what information you need out of this of mobile. Is Android mobile? If you need some information from this, and if I don't give you the password, and if you want to use that evidence collected from this mobile, I have to be heard by the magistrate in my petition. And magistrate will, while giving the order, he will indicate the respondent that is you that what type of information you need out of this device from me. So, the basic principle is that reasons to believe plays a very vital role in all your activity. So, you have to have reasonable belief of the case that you need this process. So, other information, even if was known to you, because you can't, once I give you the password, you will get all the information available here. But magistrate, while issuing the warrant, indicating the petitioners or respondents, uh, I mean, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, affidavit, has to give some sort of instructions to the authority concerned that those 
information you don't keep aside and don't communicate to any other agency so if you communicate that information received from my device is communicated to mr x and if it is this available as an evidence i will be arrested and held responsible so this is the situation of issuance of warrant by the magistrate that is as per the interim guideline of the supreme court clear <coughs> of course evidence uh, you can get the uh, in the books also in the net also i just keep up the slide with your observation these are all sections of the law now mind it through your mobile or through your internet information technology act 2000 Indian Evidence Act 1872 CRPC 1973 Indian Penal Code Indian Penal Code IBC IPC CRPC Indian Evidence Act and uh, <coughs> IT these are the acts these acts kindly grow through the particularly the evidence act and the indian penal code indian penal code has given a detail activity of what i mean the indicating the crime and the sections of the law what is the violation of ipc indian penal code like that that is there in my slide also <coughs> oral evidence no cyber crime introduction that is actually the priority in our country cyber crime <clears throat> cyber crime in the present scenario i assume greater responsibility to the law enforcement agencies especially the police officer being the nodal agency of the country's main maintaining law and order police officers are duly empowered under the provision of crpc 73 the detection assumes greater importance while combating the cyber crime deep break nahi you have deep break no <clears throat> see it act indian penal code act evidence act if you are now here <clears throat> sending threatening defamatory message by email <clears throat> this slide will be a very important slide <coughs> indicating the particular sections of the particular crime because what sort of particular information you want to get you want to have out of my device it is as per your fir as per your preliminary inquiry report which you give as a police report to your uh senior officers because as you know as a junior police officer in charge police station officers they have to give immediately after registering or after putting up the information in the diary they have to send the report to the to his immediate boss while sending the report to the immediate boss you have to have indication that what sort of crime you try to investigate or inquire so section now why you need not quote the section in your report but unless you know the what is available in that section your reporting will be wrong in order <coughs>
I think uh, uh, if the choice is your department, I don't mind sharing these slides before my participants because I am sure that, uh, you see, uh, my job as a, at the age of 80, I am here because of my passion that I want to increase the human resource development of the country. That is the foremost passion of mine. So, get hold of these slides and when you activate yourself in the uh, contending the criminology of the country, I mean crimes of the country, try to get hold of the units of there. Like sections are very much, I mean after perusing in totality, I have quoted these sections. Online sales of crime, now here, online sale of narcotic drugs, online sales of arms. Now your question is, it is not available in Indian perspective. In India, we are yet to allow arm sale online. Mind it. But narcotic cell, we have already allowed. Because there is a medicinal value of, the, of certain narcotic drugs. Like you will find in certain medicines, <coughs> as per the Drug Control Act, you cannot have without the prescription of the registered medical practitioner. Now, it is available with so many companies, with Amazon or whatever. I can order my medicine through Amazon. So my physical presence is not there. My physical documentation will not be there in Amazon. But I have just quoted the prescription number while ordering, placing my order, particularly the medicines. Say Fencidilin is a cup syrup. Cup syrup, Fencidilin is available under registered, registered medical practitioner to a patient. At the same time, fentanyl is being consumed by so many drug addicts. To contain that crime, the registered medical practitioner certification is a must for sale. Now, when I am placing the order in the Amazon, getting hold of a file of Fencidil, automatically I am declaring my prescriptions. And you being a police officer, you caught me consuming the Fencidil. You need a direct evidence against me and that is available in the electronic process with the Amazon. Unless you retrieve that point, your admissibility of the evidence will be zero. So, online sale of drugs is one of the modus operandi which could be available for the criminals. Mind it. That is what I am just, every now and then I am quoting the same thing. <coughs> Reliability of the evidence depends on the proper collection, examination, preservation and all sales. And chain of custody has to be maintained properly. With this, thank you of today's morning session. I mean this first session. I will skip on to next slide. Be very important subject, search seizure of criminal cases procedure. First thing, uh, <clears throat> what is procedure? Most of the department, most 
of our activity, you will find nowadays it is standardized. Like SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. Though violation or contradiction of standard operating procedure cannot be taken as an evidence towards the admissibility in the court of law, but definitely it has some force of law. First question will be, <clears throat> my investigation, my inquiry, my searches should be conducted according to the standard procedure available in the department. <coughs> Though the primary object should be that as per the criminal procedure code, as per the statutes of the country, the procedures has to be followed. Like I will tell you one thing, very importantly placed, where we worked, my mother, uh, my department, customs, excise and narcotics, DRI particularly, there we have a board, central board of Earlier it was called, used to be called at CBEC, Central Board of Excise and Customs, but now it is termed as CBICM, CBIC, Central Board of Indirect Access and Customs. CBIC, on consideration of the petitioner's petition, or respondent's affidavit, respondent is you and me customs officer and petitioner may be importer, exporter or any stakeholders. The board has resolved certain problem and issued some board's order and that board's order is distributed amongst the officers to abide by, to follow what board desires in the board's order. I remember a judgment of division bench order of Calcutta High Court in a matter with, where we dealt in Director of Revenue Intelligence that the division bench had observed though the board's order, contradiction or con contravention of board's order cannot be used in the format of statutes but deviation from the board's order is against the principle of natural justice. The principle of natural justice dissolves that the person who is giving the clearance of my goods has to abide by the process which is available with the department. Like that so, there it has been nicely placed in this order that con, I mean, uh, deviation of any departmental order, though not a contradiction or contravention of the provisions of the statute, but once the contravention leads to any loss of the respondent, automatically the board's, uh, I mean contravention of board's order is a curtailment of human rights, principle of natural justice. It's very nicely placed. So friend, when you adapt, when you talk about procedure, we we'll have to see that whether the procedure is followed, same like police station of Sikkim, police station of Kolkata, police station of others. It's not that by what the Sikkim ka in charge police kiya tha, amse ka kya matlab hai, nothing doing. You can't say that. So friend, when you follow such seizure investigation, 
it has to be maintainable throughout India. <coughs> this is important, I told you, subject to any other laws in force which regulates the manner of investigation, inquiry and process. The manner which is there in the process of prosecution, process of investigation, you have to follow. And very much, I tell you, Customs Act, even Narcotics Act, even any other act, they said that procedure of search and seizure has to be followed as laid down under Criminal Procedure Code 1973. In our Customs Act, it is there, the wording like this, that procedure of such seizure, there are section 100 of Customs Act, 101, 102, 105, like that, there, it is there. Accordingly, the person entering India, leaving India, all sorts are there. Circumstances there. But, in every search and seizure, under this chapter, the CRPC has to be followed with certain modification. Then what is the modification? Modification is that in the Customs Act, search authorization or search warrant can be issued by an officer not below the rank of Assistant Commissioner of Customs. So there, the search warrant, if it is required by an officer, a assistant commissioner of his own department can give a search warrant. But in the uh, criminal procedure code, there it is said that search warrant has to be taken from the magistrate. So with certain, and there, Customs Act says that procedure to be followed in a CRPC subject to the modification that in terms of magistrate it should be <coughs> it should be taken as commissioner of customs so this is how it is the enactment is there there are various functionaries the main functionaries are police There, search seizure under different statutes like NDPS Act, Customs Act, etc., etc., notified accordingly. Now, you being a police officer, when you are posted in Nathula border, you are specially notified as a customs officer giving certain power of so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so like that. In certain remote places of our country, you will find there is no customs officer available. Only the police station is there. So there, in terms of Customs Act, special notification has been issued <coughs> authorizing <coughs> police officer in that particular region to work or to function as customs officer under Customs Act. Clear. So, not necessarily that you can work as a customs officer sitting in Sikkim. So, Customs Act provides in certain sector, if it is notified, power given to you, being a police officer, you are like a customs officer. In narcotics cases, particularly, in certain section, probably section 52 or something, there the state police officers are empowered to enforce the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act 1985. This is the process. Cognizable offense and non-cognizable offense. 
Now, cogni mostly cognizable offense means robbery, murder, heinous crime. I mean, major crimes in the country, like rape, all sorts. Okay? These are actually called cognizable offense. And non cognizable is <coughs> more or less, less like, you know, <coughs> you have taken my, uh, what do you call, uh, say, my, uh, there is a land, some portion of my land you have just crossed, put some barrier. So that is not a uh, major crime. So that's not a heinous crime. It will a sort of arbitration type. So they are called as non cognitive offenses. But to give you a sort of guideline on this, the conviction, if it is more than three years available as per that statute, will be called as a cognitive offense. And in Customs Act particularly, we have, there is a notification, there is a modification in the Customs Act where they say that in so and so cases, as per the value of the goods confiscated, I mean seized from a person, the cognizability of the offense is taken care. The Apex Court had made it mandatory for Mont police to conduct an inquiry before registering the FIR except in cases of rape, murder, robbery, etc. Have you gone through this line, friend? Okay. Uh, I, have, I should modify this paragraph because I have already told you about the last uh, five uh, bench Supreme Court observation about three days back. So take care of that observation and accordingly modify this paragraph. Okay? Because their modification is very simple. You have to, <coughs> you have, to have <coughs> preliminary inquiry done. You cannot just move and straight away and arrest him. So you have to have a preliminary inquiry. And with the preliminary inquiry, you have to give a police report to the uh, uh, magistrate and magistrate is, will give an order. In case where the FIR, FIR uh, I mean, as court has observed registration uh, of the FIR, I mean, complaint, okay? Sir, can you elaborate, sir? Pardon? Sir, can you elaborate, sir? Can I elaborate? Yes, sir. <coughs> I have come to you, okay, <clears throat> I told you, sir, this man has killed my son with the knife, okay, so man, his name is so and so, and he has run away, I could not catch him, because private person also can arrest, according to CRPC, okay, so I am a private person. I can arrest him if he is available there, but he has run away. So, I have saved from the provisions of CRPC indicating that being a private, private person, though the statute said availability of the statute is very much there to arrest him, but I could not arrest because he has run away. Try to understand this. This is number one. Number two is, this is a cognizable offense. According to five best Supreme Court judgment, that I have to have a, you have to have a preliminary inquiry. What is preliminary inquiry? That means you go to the spot or you make a surveillance. You ask me a few questions to me that how your son is murdered, where he was going, all sorts you are asking me. So you are writing a report. And that is a police report. Once you write the police report, according to your procedure, you have to put it before your senior officer. So that means senior officer has to sign your police report. And with that police report, you have to go to magistrate. In case 154.3 is there, mind you, where you are, you are not going to uh, uh, I mean, register the FIR for certain reason. 
But in case you have registered your FIR, you cannot go and uh, arrest me straight away. मतलब क्या होता है कॉग्निजेबल ऑफेंस में आप क्या करता दौड़ के जाता है उसको पकड़ लेता वो मर्डर क्या है वो पकड़ो पर वो अरेस्ट कर लिया अकॉर्डिंग टू फाइव बेस्ट जज बेंच जज जजमेंट दैट यू कैन नॉट अरेस्ट हिम अनलेस यू हैव अ प्रीलिमिनरी इंक्वायरी तो प्रीलिमिनरी इंक्वायरी क्या है आस्किंग मी द कॉम्प्लेनेंट 1 2 3 4 Going to the spot, yes, is a murder who I. Oh, Admi, which which is a murder who? His name is what? Eh, so inquiry is done. Preliminary inquiry. A preliminary inquiry report is made. Make a senior officer to sign. Make it. Go. You go. Arrest him. And that preliminary inquiry should not be extended more than seven days. But in case, suppose what happens? Rape. में तो आपको किसी पता नहीं है हुआ कि नहीं हुआ कोई भी ऐसा ही ज्यादा बहुत सारे इनियस क्राइम है जिसमें आपको पता ही नहीं चलता ये कॉग्निजेबिलिटी ले, लेने से क्या करके नहीं देखा तो उसके बारे में आपको आपको केस डायरी में लिखना है जे सेवन इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू मेक द प्रिलिमिनरी इंक्वायरी इन सेवन डेज आई रिक्वायर अंडर द्री डेज दैट इज अवेलेबल अंडर दूट ठीक है so this is what the modification clear a <coughs> cognizable offense ka fir straight away up do ke usko arrest nahi kar sakta aapko preliminary inquiry aap arrest kariye 7 days rukna nahi hai you don't have to wait 7 days mind it you can do the preliminary inquiry within 10 hours but it has to be reported आपको क्या होता है आप जैसे ही आम, आपको कंप्लेन किया आप बोला आइए चलिए अरेस्ट करके आपको लेके गया ले जाके स्पॉट में चला गया उधर में स्पॉट का सीन फिन का छवि फवी ले लिया पिक्चर ले लिया वीडियो लिया सब लिया ये अवेलेबल नहीं है इसके लिए आपको प्रिलिमिनरी इंक्वायरी करके सीनियर ऑफिसर से ऑर्डर लेके वारंट प्रोसेस होगा तो वारंट कोर्ट से ले लीजिए नहीं तो आप शुरू करिए दूसरा जगह में ऐसा ऐसा आदमी भाग सकता है उसके लिए आप वारंट दे दीजिए मतलब देखिये एक चीज है द सुप्रीम द कंट्री सुप्रीम एक्टिविटी इज is what fundamental right of the person has to be kept highest but isme kya hota hai cognizable offense aap preliminary inquiry nahi kiya kuch nahi kiya aapko arrest kar liya aapko dekhiye humko i am i am my girlfriend <coughs> ek ek girlfriend ka dusra koi male member hai usse koi झगड़ा हुआ है सेकेंड कंटेंडर विल कम टू यू इसे भाई ओ ओ आदमी मर्डर रहा है वो मर्डर कर दिया उसका भाई को फॉल्स लगा दिया आप क्या किया आप हमको अरेस्ट कर लिया माई फंडामेंटल राइट हैज बीन टोटली जियोपटाइज बट यू हैव नॉट मेड एनी इंक्वायरी बिकॉज योर एफ आई आर इंडिकेटेड दैट इट्स ए द कंप्लेट इज ए ऑफ कॉग्निजेबल ऑफेंस that is not available this is the process which has been observed by the five bench supreme court judge sir so we have a practice out here so you have to i have some problem with hearing no tell me yes sir what what sir what so we have a practice sir yahan pe kya hota hai ki after the judgment of arnish kumar usually we don't arrest if the offense committed by the person is below 7 years नो नो वो तो कंडीशन है कंडीशन इज कंडीशन ऑफ अरेस्ट का दूसरा बात है दैट ए मेल फीमेल मेंबर कैन नॉट बी अरेस्टेड विदाउट फीमेल मेंबर देन इफ इफ एन हैंडीकैप पर्सन ऑल सॉर्ट्स कंडीशन आई विल जस्ट टेल यू बट आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट कंडीशन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट योर पावर सर आई एम कमिंग टू दैट हां तो 
after the judgment of Arnesh Kumar sir, kya hota hai ki the uh, if the uh, offence committed is below seven years, then we usually don't arrest. We serve a forty one. मैं नोटिस सॉल्व करते हैं। अब कहाँ है? ये तो ये तो हम बोलता है थ्री डेज का पहले जजमेंट। हाँ सर। सो देन तीन चार रोज चार दिन का पहले का जजमेंट। सर आई एम कमिंग सर। सो उसके बाद ना सर इफ कोई हिनेस क्राइम होता है ना सर तो ये फाउंड अच्छा वो दैट द पर्सन इन्वॉल्व्ड इज़ द पर्सन एलिस इज़ उसको so we clearly mention that and we submit it before the court. Okay, the arrest is first, then report. Yes. Yeah, report should be first, then arrest. Okay, sir. Okay, this is the change. You first report, then arrest. Uska pahle kya hota? Aap arrest, then report. Abhi report, arrest. Just observation. Thik hai? Aap ko change nahi hai. Sir, sir. Then according to you, from now on, अगर हमको केस रजिस्टर करना है, yes tell me, जैसे कि वे स्पीकिंग ऑफ़ द रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ़ द केस में सर, हाँ, आप रजिस्ट्रेशन के बारे में बात करते हैं, हाँ, हाँ, सर इस तो बात में हो, हाँ, सर रजिस्ट्रेशन हो, हाँ, तो according to you अभी आपसे जो वो फाइव फाइव बेंचेस जो टेक्नोलॉजी आ रही है हमारे FIR. Now question is that when a police officer is going to register an FIR, isn't it? Okay. Now FIR is, one is you being an officer in charge of the police station may allow the complainant to file the FIR or may not allow to file the FIR. That is your activity. Now, why you are not going to file the FIR? You have to have a report of reasons to believe. So that is indicated. And you have, you have told that complainant that under this, I am not going to register your FIR. Then that person, availability as per the CRPC is that he can go to your boss. And if your boss says that after perusal of the case and your statement, the, I mean police officer's statement and the party's complaint. If he finds that there is a process of FIR to be registered, he will tell, he will instruct his subordinate officer, you register the FIR. In third case of section 154 is that, that if, if in a superior officer rejects filing, registering the FIR, availability is there, I can go to the court. Now once I go to the court, court after hearing me, he will instruct the officer to file and register the FIR. And FIR has to be filed by you. <clears throat> now, you have got the magistrate's order of filing FIR, reg registering FIR, you have registered the FIR. Once you register the FIR, then what happened? 156, uh, uh, 56 will be available, 165 will be available to search, to go and arrest. Under, because cognizable offense ka FIR hua. There the modification I have discussed. Am I clear to you? Usme modification kya hai? Je aapko court, once he gives the order, that order court cannot give. 154.3 ka court jo directives deta hai register karne ke liye, os order court ka power nahi hai. 154.3 ka. Exactly sir, but is me wahi confusion hai na, we are getting confused ki P kya hota hai. Huh? Jo preliminary inquiry jo aapne bata hai. Preliminary inquiry. Where is that thing? Preliminary inquiry, I am a complainant. Yeah, you came to me. I came to you. You have recorded my statement. Statement. Point one, two, three, four. So the case has been registered. No, look, I am satisfied. You are registered. No, you are you are satisfied. Yeah. You are fine. Then for that, in that case, is this be required or not? No, 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 no. So that third panel must be? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Change the panel. 
thought that first thing I said that kindly go through the thought para and keep a note. That is what I have indicated that thought para needs modification. modification. That five pen judge has indicated that the police officer <coughs> cannot register the FIR of the so indicating that cognitability of the offense without having a preliminary inquiry done. तो उसका मतलब क्या है? आप क्या होता है? आप register कर दिया चले गए, लेकिन आपको अभी note बनाने पड़ेगा। आप जैसा एक चीज देखिए, condition of search and seizure. One of the condition is that that under the Narcotic Drugs Act, you have to have, you have to be searched by the occupants of the person. आप एक घर में सर्च करने गया वो घर वाले को बोलता है देखिए हम आपको घर में सर्च करने आया आप हमको सर्च करने मांगता ये आपको प्रोसेस में है आप जब बिफोर इंटरिंग द इनग्रेस ऑफ द हाउस यू हैव टू गो वॉलेंटरीली एंड से दैट वेदर यू वांट टू सर्च मी ही विल से नो तो ये जो लाइन है ये जो एक्टिविटी है अंडर एनडीपीएस इज अ मैंडेटरी प्रोविजन once it is mandatory provision of the search and getting ingress in the house, where you have written, while you write the panchanama, you have to indicate that line specially because this is a mandatory activity. A search of a woman has to be done with a woman officer. Where it is written in the panchanama, unless you write in the panchanama, the recovery made from a woman person, he will be charged being a seizing officer. So, to safeguard your activity, you have to write one line in the search list or panchanama that Mrs. Swanso was running away with the goods and he was intercepted, she was intercepted and she was searched by Mrs. Swanso, the assistant police officer. In the panchanama, you have to indicate that line. If you know, if you don't indicate that line, the search and seizure of the woman person will be zero in the court of law. Admissibility of the evidence will not be there. Clear? <coughs> Any question? No. Sir, there is a question sir, regarding... I am still confused, sir. Pardon? So I am still confused regarding the registration of the case. Sir. Registration of the case. I will discuss details. Oh, no, sir, it is mandatory to, to conduct a preliminary inquiry in every complaint we receive at the police. Yes, yes. That is what they said. I will give you the quotation of the judgment if it is there. Otherwise, it is there in the net. Net will be there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> I'll just read out this. I told you about 153, 154.3, because where, where the magistrate has to give order of, I mean direction to the police station that you registered this FIR. There they said the magistrate has got no power to issue such instruction under section 154.3. Why? Why they have said that discuss Article 21 on fundamental right of the accused and witness and the complainant. There they said that once you, <coughs> the magistrate, Ojo 154.3 ka order instruction dene ka koi unka power nahi hai. It's a pre enquiry order. Trial ka pehle order, trial shuru hi nahi hua, inquiry shuru hi nahi hua, samajh gaya? 
तो इससे बिकॉज ही इज इंस्ट्रक्टिंग द पुलिस ऑफिसर टू रजिस्टर द एफ आई आर उसमें क्या है आप रजिस्ट्रेशन नहीं अलाउ किया सीनियर ऑफिसर अलाउ नहीं किया वो हमारा पास आया आई एम ए मैजिस्ट्रेट आई विल इशू इंस्ट्रक्शन एज पर वन फोर्टी फोर पर अर्लियर जो वन फिफ्टी फोर थ्री का ऑर्डर था जो आई विल गिव ए मैजिस्ट्रेट विल गिव एन ऑर्डर टू फाइल एन एफ आई आर रजिस्टर ये तो दैट हैज बीन चेंज वॉट इज द चेंज द मैजिस्ट्रेट वैसा ऑर्डर देने का पावर इज नॉट देयर बिकॉज दिस इज ए प्री स्टेज प्री ट्रायल स्टेज ऑर्डर वन फिफ्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट का जो वन सेवेंटी थ्री का ऑर्डर आए वो ऑर्डर इज ए पोस्ट ट्रायल ऑर्डर चार्जशीट का पास बाद में जो ऑर्डर देता है मैजिस्ट्रेट आपको क्या है आप रजिस्ट्रेशन करता है रजिस्ट्रेशन करने के बाद चार्जशीट प्लेस करता है कोर्ट में कोर्ट चार्जशीट देख के शो मोटर चार्जशीट में देखेगा कुछ है नहीं क्लोज कर देगा और चार्जशीट में देखेगा हाँ कुछ है तो उसका एक्सेप्ट करेगा एक्सेप्ट कैसे करेगा ही विल ही विल डायरेक्ट द एक्यूज टू अपियर बिफोर मी और इफ इट इज अरेस्ट केस यू हैव टू प्रोड्यूस द पर्सन बिफोर मी आम प्रोड्यूसर ऑफ दिस आई विल जस्ट टेल यू दैट यस इन केस ऑफ एनी फर्दर एनक्वायरी आई ऑर्डर फर्दर एनक्वायरी इफ देर इज नो सच थिंग आई विल एक्सेप्ट योर चार्जशीट एंड आई विल गिव यू दैट एक कॉपी उसको दो स्टेटमेंट दो सब दो दिस ऑर्डर ए मैजिस्ट्रेट हैज गॉट पावर बट वो पावर जो पावर मैजिस्ट्रेट के पास दिया है सीआरपीसी दिस इज नॉट द पावर इट हैज बीन ऑब्जर्व बाय ललिता कुमारी वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ गुजरात फाइव बेंच कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल बेंच ललिता कुमारी वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ गुजरात फाइव बेंच कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल जज बेंच ठीक है उसमें और भी बोला है प्रिलिमिनरी एनक्वायरी मस्ट मस्ट बिफोर रजिस्ट्रेशन सेवन डेज मिनिमम सेवन डेज मैक्सिमम सेवन डेज मिनिमम नहीं मैक्सिमम देन एफ आई आर रजिस्ट्रेशन कैन बी रजिस्टर्ड आफ्टर दिस जजमेंट मैजिस्ट्रेट ऑर्डर ओनली आफ्टर चार्जशीट और पुलिस रिपोर्ट दैट इज बिफोर ट्रायल स्टार्ट After police file charge sheet, which is under section 173 of the CRPC, I mean total up total report तो पढ़ा नहीं है देख this is there so uh, am I clear to you अभी भी देखिए एक चीज है इतना दिन से जो आयन चलता था वो तो change करने ही पड़ेगा कल कोई order होने से देखिए एक चीज एग्जाम्पल यू नो I was so emotional in the Calcutta airport. I felt so sorry that my tears came from my eyes. You know, I'll tell you. In a customs organization, certain officers have been allowed, without examination of his baggage, under the Privilege Act law. of government of india so privilege act i mean the act is very much there and according to the provisions of the act the officers indicated is like you know diplomat posted in india a person having a diplomatic visa with diplomatic uh, activity they are exempted governor exempted 
So many, so many, so many indicators are there. Not you and me. I mean, they are like really, they, are, they deserve uh, privileges like that. You know, President of USA is coming. A junior police officer is going to open his baggage. Is it possible? So they have to be notification. There has to be certain law. And that law indicated that these persons or these people are exempted from examination of the baggage. You know, in the scanning process in today's situation, I observed in the scanning machine that there are indications of one, I mean, uh, well, contraband goods, contraband, and huge contraband in terms of roads, maybe. So the process is that even if you don't have power to search, you can detain, seal it up, keep it in your bond with witness and or whatever. The formalities are there. You seal it up and keep in your bond, and then the matter will be taken up with the, by the that government with that government and with external ministry, all sorts, formalities are laid down according to the privilege law. Okay. Now, me being a junior officer in the field, automatically, you know, once you catch a criminal, you are happy, you are emotional. So, I found, I am sure that the baggage contains some contraband. Then ultimately, the matter was examined and the report, the order came from the Minister of, I mean, Government of India, indicating that the baggage should not be opened and examined. The baggage should be, that suitcase should be handed over to so-and-so, so-and-so, that means Ministry of that country, Consulate General of that country, attache so-and-so country, with a sealed condition, and the consulate will take the goods and give a cross-border certificate. That means that suitcase will be sealed and handed over to that person, authorized person, and authorized person will take that baggage to outside country at the point of export. And that export certification will come to the bond officer. This is the process. Now what happened? You lose the scissor. As a customs officer, toiling hard, collecting intelligence information, ultimately for what? For, con for detection. But the detection has never been made. So I was depressed. So question is, that if law does not permit you to activate yourself in the process, you are not an ordinary person. Your power, you may be an ordinary person in your house, but you are, when you are on the job, you are in the framework of the laws of the country. If the law provides certain changes today, tomorrow if you are activated something, it should be under that law. Because I know it's a question of depression, because a person will run away, crime will be encouraged and all these things. But we can't help it. We are all officers of the country, enforcement of the country, so we have to abide by according to the law of the country. Okay, now let us, okay. Sorry. Search is a significant stage in the process of investigation. These are mostly sections. Scene of crime. This is one of the most important pride, I should say. Scene of crime. Now, in your activity, because we being that we, I mean, uh, in fact, he said, there is a paradigm. I was all along 39 years in the Department of Customs and GST. So automatically, my process of understanding or my process of deliberation pertaining probably towards customs. But I'll tell you one thing, that drawing a panchnama, the particularly in your activity, police, scene of crime, plays a very, very vital and important role. Very much. Why? Scene of how to, when you want to go for an observation of scene of crime. My dear friend, 
I must tell you what is the definition of observation. Friends, close your eyes, all of you, close your eyes, please, close. Now one question, amongst all the participants, anybody who expects, open your eyes, please answer. Anybody who expects? No. No or yes? Tell me, yes, how many? Sir, how many of your colleagues are with specs? You don't know. Anybody? No one. Anybody? No one. I will tell you none. I will tell you none. Why? I have observed and he has seen. My dear participant, he has seen the goods. He has seen the persons and I have observed the person. The difference between seeing and observation is this. Clear? So when you go to the scene of crime, you must observe. You don't see. And observation comes from where? Almighty. God. Bhagavan Deta Hai. That is important. A person, a police officer standing here. Oh, police officer, Udhar ne dara khada hai. Oh, ek admi Udhar se aya hai. Oh, police officer dekha hai usko. A police officer dara, hey, pap, 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 pakal diya. Kyu? He is also police officer. He is also a police officer. He has seen, he has observed. After searching, he found a revolver in his back. And he has seen, he has not found the revolver. He has seen, he has found the revolver. Why difference? Why this difference? Because he has observed, he has seen. This is the difference. Observation is perception. Detailed perception of seeing. After seeing, you perceive. That is observation. So once you go to the scene of crime, observation is a must. Mind it. You observe. And then accordingly, you make a sort of scenario. And that scenario in today's subjective is either you videograph it or take a photograph. Because Hypothetically, I am a lecturer. I am sitting here. Okay. I have drank this glass of water. I have given you a lecture so many hours, for so many hours. And here, here I found I am dead. And somebody has complained that poison was there in the water. And my placement is this. How can I drink water? Glass is there. If your scenario of the scene of crime has not indicated that the glass of water is beyond my reach and if the post-mortem report and the forensic report says that this water contains some poison which immediately on drunk drink will be a dead person. So there will be no timing for me to take this chair away from the glass. So this is a false case of murder. Am I wrong when you talk about admissibility of the evidence? This is what important when you talk about scene of crime. Clear? <clears throat> Clear?
clearly these are the areas and when you talk about scene of crime, that's in your subject matter, in your subject issue, scene of crime is very important. <clears throat> So, very dictionary meaning of observation is an act of regulated perception, concentrated. It is not an aimless looking about. So, observation is a must. I have, for my own No. <clears throat> so, friend, with this example or with this scenario, you could feel the importance of scene of crime. Then scene of crime is a very important placement. And then I remember that observation is that that not a simply scene. So when you put a scene of crime reporting or scenario or photograph or videograph, one important thing is that while you examining the scene of crime, when you examining the photograph, the most important factor is you observe the situation. So this is observation. So that is what do not alter, pick up, touch any object before it has been perceived or noted specially their layout. Then accurate sketches to be drawn. Do not allow any unauthorized person to interfere or meddle around and touch anything of importance. Now you know, I'll tell you, normally I, I really uh, cannot keep quiet on this issue. One of the most important understanding of the crime throughout the world is that the person with power, person with activity, if they are a lot, then the crime could be reduced correctly. But we are not so. We are human beings. We are akin to corrupt practices. I remember one case, just to give you that example, that do not allow any other unauthorized to meddle around, or a person to meddle around. <coughs> In airport, the suitcases used to come with goods. It used to be stored in the custody of the custodian. There was an information received that the suitcases are coming with the contraband and somebody somehow clandestinely removing the goods from the suitcase and taking it away. And when the actual owner is coming to uh, get the suitcase, Either they found nothing in one situation, in another situation is that, that the person who is removing the goods clandestinely, he, he is putting some bricks and uh, what you call scraps inside the suitcase just to cover up the weight of the suitcase so that the law enforcing agency cannot detect. The actual, the consignee will come to customs and will receive the suitcase after the clearance. In our situation, we have, an, in, we have a process by which simply on declaration of the person, we allow the package to go without examination. 
because this is available under the law. What happened is, information came that Mr. X, working in the airport, clandestinely removing from the suitcase. And I was, myself along with some officers, we are in the intelligence, air intelligence unit, on behalf of DRI. With this situation, packages used to come from the tarmac, after the, uh, from the airport ho aircraft hold, when the packages are being discharged from the aircraft, what I did, I just took out one hair from my head and put that hair on the keyhole of the suitcase. Now mind it, it's a process that once you put one hair, you place somewhere, it might remain there till some other air or anything is not there. But suitcase has gone inside the bond. And after next morning or that same night, when I opened the bond with the custodian, and then I was just looking like the oh, kitna package hai, kya hai, nahi hai, sab dekhte, dekhte. Then I observed that my hair, which was placed in the keyhole, was not there. With this situation, we ordered that the suitcase should be examined in our, in my, our presence. So the person and that order was made known to both sides, the Kanai person or the smuggler. Nobody came for clearance of the package. It was kept uncleared. So after giving three days notice to the airliners, we opened in presence of witnesses and all that suitcase with the instruction that all the three go down officers, bond officers, who are there in the same bond according to the badges in a day, they should be present while examining the suitcase. <clears throat> so when we opened the suitcase, we found the scraps were there. All scraps were there, and there is one British Airways, uh, British Airways ka jo carry bag deta na, side bag, free deta hai na, travelers ko, wo ek suitcase, us, uska briefcase ka, suitcase ka andar mein, wo hand baggage, udar mein ghai, and automatically locked hai. Samsonite suitcase. <coughs> so, we opened up examining, we found that, British Airways bag, then certain oh, iron ka tuta bhanga, just to see that weight is not lost or something. And we are making an inventory in a room. And three go down officers are there. A scenario, scene of crime. So we opened up. Then I told the seizing officer, don't touch. We like to send these scraps to the forensic laboratory. So, out of three go-down officers, one go-down officer, Shil Sahib, ki dorkar, ki dorkar, kya dorkar, kya jururat hai, kya jururat hai, ye to scrap hai, iska kya examination ka hai? What it indicates? Because the reporting will be that he has put his finger on the scrap when the fingerprint comes from that British Airways bag or the, you know, that scrap, automatically you will say, while being, the goods were being searched, I was present and I was also part of the searching party, so I it took the inventory. So my uh, <coughs> fingerprint will be there automatically. So this is what the scene of crime is important. Mind it. So, we could pinpoint out of the entire lot who is not available in that particular site. I can make three categories, suspect, accused, offender. Can I not say that the person who handled immediately ran and just meddled around the package, 
he could be an offender instead of suspect. So, investigation has really gathered or made faster investigation identifying the criminal. This is what the result of the scene of crime. Okay. Now, next slide. Precautions. Now, we all take precautions while you go for search. Definitely. Now, the free ingress and reasonable facilities to be accorded for both searches with warrant or without warrant. Free ingress. A safeguard be provided in favor of Pardana Singh uh, woman. Automatically, this available. All we know, anybody who doesn't know can raise your hand. I am sure none. The, in case of improper and unlawful obstruction, such party shall take all necessary reasonable belief. What necessary action you could take? If I don't allow the ingress, if I don't allow giving you lock and key chabi, aap kya kar sector? Can you just break open immediately? No. There is a process under the CRPC. There is a process and procedure under CRPC how to break open a lock. So that procedure has to be adopted without immediately breaking open the lock. Search to be made in presence of two respectable witnesses. Now, when you talk about respectable witness, with my experience, of course, the availability deserves exception. Don't allow taking minor witnesses, number one. Number two, don't allow witnesses who are very much known to the person where you are searching. Very much known. Avoid relatives of the person. Avoid any stock witness. What do you mean a stock witness? That means, kabhi kabhi hota hai, police station mein ek jankari admi hai, o roj cha pani pita hai, ye pita hai, usko bhai search karne jata hai, chalo 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 amara sath. O leke gari mein leke jata tha, o udhar mein usko signature ke liye. Avoid that. In case of any strict type of investigation, in case of any case where admissibility of evidence deserves more precaution, don't allow such witnesses. This is important. Now it is desirable to search during daylight. This is desirable as per CRPC. <coughs> but according to exigency, if you find that the goods will be removed away, or the person will run away, you can go immediately and search. But all these conditions as laid down under CRPC, if it is not followed, my dear friend, please keep a note in your diary. Why you could not observe this? Because exception. Even if that because I can very much say that documents or exhibit or process of investigation, if there is any illegality, there is a Supreme Court judgment. I immediately cannot tell you because I don't remember that. The Supreme Court judgment indicated that the evidence recovered even in illegal process has to be observed and with the application of mind by the authority concerned. That means, authority concerned means including magistrate, including adjudicating officer. So, don't say that, oh, bhai, isko to exhibit nahi kar chekta, chodo. Illegal way to hota nahi. Because there is an order that if the illegality of procuring the evidence is a subject matter of application of mind. So this is the process which should be followed.
before entering a search, including witnesses, shall offer them. I told you, offer yourself to be searched. Precautions against any damage to the property is to be adhered to. You know, am log jahaj me talasi karne jata na. Kabi kabi jahaj, am log customs officer jahaj me talasi karne jata tha. To ek chief engineer tha. Koi koi jagah me technical area hota hai. Usme chief engineer ko bola ke am log bolta hai jab hai isko jara dekhe khol khol sakta ki nahi. A not able to khol ne se koi kharap hoga. To wo ek jan pachar chief engineer tha. Very old man. Wo bolta seal sab. Are you going to break or check? I remember even at this age. You are going to damage or save. So this is what I remember. Don't try to damage the property of the person. That's important. I mean, my dear friend, I'm a different person. What examples I'm giving is absolutely truth. No agitated, angry aggregation or whatever you say. Exaggeration. Panch Nama shall be prepared on the spot in quadruplicate as per CRPC. Char copy banana hai, ek copy party ko di jiega, ek copy apna case record me raega, ek copy apna senior officer ko dega, dega likha hai. Owner of the occupier, second copy to send to the magistrate, third copy to case diary, Superior officer, fourth copy to station record. This is as per CRPC process. What is Panchanama? That is search list. Panchanama means, what is Panch? Witness. Panchas means witness. Nama means Nama means, is a, you know, very uh, religious talk, Nama. That means, Nam Karo. O jo Admi Jab Jata Hai, when he is expiring, people are making a sort of yellow piece of uh, cloth. And on the cloth, Sri Krishna, Sri Krishna, Sri Krishna, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Likha Rata Hai. But particularly certain religious issues. So why? Because Nama, this is a very religious one. The Panch Nama means the statement of the Panchas. That means witnesses statement. So when I say the Panch Nama is witnesses statement, when you write in English, what should be activation? Active or passive? Ingraji bolo bhai. When I say this is the statement of the Panchas, you are writing the Panchanama as a police officer. So English should be in passive voice. It cannot be active voice. Ui Sri Swanso Swanso. The Panchas of the uh, Swanso has been called by the Sri Swanso police officer to witness the search operation of this. So passive voice mahutana, as if this is the statement given to you by the Panchas. That is called Panchanama. So Panchanama recording, you are recording as a police officer, but it has to be in passive voice. So that it is indicated that what he has said, I have written. Panchanama. Now, this is the customs ka liye ek important placement to uh, tell you. Kaiko, every time, as if I have been always harping on the same thing, as a law enforcement officer, one has to be very much updated. Otherwise, we will lose the case. Because you have toiled hard, you have processed charge sheet, everything, but you forgot that this portion has been amended or modified. Ultimately, in the criminal trial, it will be zero. So, that is important. Isme kya hota? Am log sara jivan se panch nama banata, panch nama banata. Suddenly, Supreme Court has said that the Customs Act provides that reasonable belief has to be formed 
by the seizing officer. Indeed, very important. Reasonable belief should be formed by the seizing officer, then only he can seize the goods. Now, Panchnama is the statement of the Panchas, where the seizing officer has indicated that he himself has formed the reasonable belief. Nowhere. So, from since that time, CBIC, that means our board office, has indicated that along with the Panchnama, every seizing unit has to write a search list also, seizure list also, where it will be signed by the same witness and by the customs officer himself and the occupants. Mind it. So, there the seizing officer is writing, he has formed the reasonable belief. So, this will be just addendum to the Panchnama. Clear? Such list showing the press search. All these are there. This is all process. You know that. Any question on search, Caesar, or isko ke dijega unko? You are going to give them copy. Standing. Okay. Or mind it. I t you take care of any modification. In case of modification, I really welcome. I welcome. Because this is, you know, mistake can happen. I can always say, even mistake can happen everywhere and anywhere. But in case anywhere you find that there could be a change, let me know. I will be happy to acknowledge. Such list shall indicate the goods as far as Further, where it is not, uh, this is important, last two lines, where it is not practicable to take over the goods or seize the goods. It is called actually Supardhanama. Supardhanama. Aap seen of crime mein dekha hai, iron chest hai, itna bara iron chest hai, iron chest ke ek murder, oh, murder ek uh, robber, Oh, kya usme duplicate chabi bana ke, welding machine se kaat ke, sab iron chest se leke gya. And iron chest is placed in the room. Do you think that it is practicable to take over the iron chest in your police station, custody? No. In such situation, law permits you, procedure permits you to keep that iron chest in his occupation, in his place. <coughs> with the total <coughs> write-up and a sort of bond indicating that he is not going to handle part with or place, change the place or whatever. All these things are very much there and he will keep custody on behalf of the police authority, seizing authority. And will keep as and when required, he is going to place this before that. So that this is a process, so automatically your hardship will be minimized. It's not possible practically. So, this is the situation where it is available under CRPC. Points to be noted while preparing Panchnama. These are the detail point we always write. We always indicate in the framework of the Panchanama, but it is just an indication keeping in mind. Why indication? Because you know, name, occupation, age, address of the Panchan, Panchanama to be recorded. Panchas to be recorded. Why? Because we have to record the Panchas, ka naam nahi likta, address, nahi likta, parentage, we have to do it. But it is just a sort of recollection. That is why this points has been separately written and separated. Time, date, place of start and such, all these are there. Mention the presence of occupants <coughs> before starting the search, search, location of the flat, party should, all this, it should be as per the scene of crime. 
give details about the production of the keys of locked Almira, Almira Van and Bulach, Almira, Iron Sep, etc. Field test kit. Now here, field test kit, particularly NDPS, narcotic drug, psychotropic substance. When you go for such, there are certain tools you have to carry, it's automatic. And hopefully, hopefully, very soon we are going to get processing of carrying a forensic test kit. Forensic test kit. And forensic test kit, I think it's all under discussion. In fact, in the DRI, the other day we are talking about that and uh, it is being processed. Keep details about the production of keys, keep field test kit, keep gross weight, etc. That's very important. You know, this gross weight, net weight, I just added one case, just for your understanding. I'm not running time, okay. Uh, you know, in a seizure operation, we seized some opium. It's about 45 kilos of opium. We weighed it, it was in a vessel. So, vessel ka jo ek jahaj mein, wo kya hota, wo usme sab kuch rata hai, provisions rata hai, wahi scale rata hai, sab kuch rata hai, cheap sword rata hai, jo khana pina banata hai, sab, everything is available in a cheap, it's just like a house. So, we have opium in the engine room. So, the opium in the engine room is the chief steward. Why? You have to take the wing scale. So, in the wing scale, you have to take the wing scale. 48 something kilos, point some kilos. So, we have wrote in the punch number and everything like that. Sealed, sampled, everything was done in a very nice manner. Then, chemical examiner. It was being examined by the chemical examiner in our custom house, Upar Me. So, <coughs> Pura sealed package, everything with the inventory package, everything uh, in after a few days during investigation was taken. And when they opened up the big pa main packet seal and uh, wanted to examine whether, because we don't write op opium, we write yellow, uh, this uh, black or whatever substance suspected or said to be opium, whatever we say. But it has to be examined, processed by the chemical examiner. So chemical examiner, when it opens, it sees 42 something kilos. So 5 kilos and 6 kilos less. It is less than that. So, the boss said to our boss, he said that the seal will give you Commendation letter dega, na suspension letter dega. I was seizing officer. So I was really shocked. Then I said, kya bolega bolo, kya kaise hoga? Have you seen the examination? Oh, upar mein chemist, chemist kya bola? I was not there in the, wo to dusra examination hota hai. So I'm, wo bola, kya hoa? So I'm usme, fifth floor mein, fourth floor mein kya hai? Chip, examiner, chief chemical examiner. Unko pas gya, bolo kya ho? Bolo bhai, ye to, aapko punch na ma, isa 48 something kilo hai, aapko maal mila hai 40 something kilo. Exact weight. To gross weight, aap kya likha hai? Aap bolo gross weight likha hai, net weight likha hai, gross weight likha hai, net ke isa likha hai. Ho to package mein tha. Gross weight isa likha tha. Bolo, aap bolo, hote nahi, ho, 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 nahi ho sekta. I myself have seen the weightage, weight, weight. So ultimately, we have discussed it, we have said that the jhaj is still high, the jhaj will go to the weighing scale. So officially, I seized the weighing scale of the chief steward. I took a statement from the chief steward that this weighing scale I have given to the customs officer for women of that narcotics and this is the same weighing scale and received. Handed over to customs. Kote ek note fort leka hai. Lekya hai. Dekha o ink scale examination. Are ek a ink scale. There is a error. There is a error. 
and that error officially has been indicated and that was reported in the case record. Mind you. So this is important. Just to alert, I have just indicated this story, this fact. This happens. You can't avoid that. Because we take aids from so many outsourced area. It may be wrong. Achha, then all these things are there. Now mind it here, oh, <coughs> punch, oh, jo sample drawing, there is a indication of procedure of sample drawing. And kindly go through the procedure of sample drawing from the internet. In case you are going to draw samples of any material, mind it, you must observe or adhere to the process of sampling as per the regulations and rules. It's important. You know, in our customs point, sludge oil, sludge oil, that means, Ojo contaminated oil jo bolta hai, jo jahaj mein milta hai, usme kya hota hai, sludge oil honne se, you don't require license, it can be uh, allowed clearance on payment of duty. No license is required. Lekin pure oil honne se, uh, license required. <coughs> now there is a process of sampling. The drum where you are putting the goods there, from the tank or whatever, <coughs> you have to roll. Drums has to be rolled few times. And then you draw the sample. Churning, shaking is important. Kobi kobi medicine file mein dekhega, shake well and then drink. So this is the process of sampling. Now once this process is not adopted, your result will be different. Now once the result is different, I don't take care of result. But what I really take care of the chart sheet of the trial. Because when trial, when during the trial, court might order because the people, the complainant or the accused might forward a note to the court indicating there should be resampling or retest. And court cannot refuse that. And if the retest may sample, give the different reporting, so automatically your investigation will suffer. Because of wrong way of sample drawing. <coughs> correction in sometime punch nama likte likte koi correction hota hai to correction has to be kept taken care nicely aapko bank check kabhi kabhi likha hai likhta hi hota check book check jo issue karta hai check mein different thing hone se allow karega to check mein koi cut hone se allow karega koi do handwriting hone se allow karega to same process Whatever could be possible, I'll adapt that. <clears throat> oh, that we have discussed about witnesses. Electronic device. Now, here, I have, I have told in the beginning that the Customs Act provides a definite section about electronic device. This is what I have indicated and this is actually uh, a court's order in a customs matter. Niche mein aapko citation hai, SN Agrotos versus Commissioner of Customs, New Delhi, Anwar PV Supra. <coughs> this is the case site. You can go to the uh, law journal or internet and get hold of this, the process of custody of the sample, the process of indicating that how the evidence could be utilized, these are very much in details, it is there. <coughs> now, arrest. Now, you know, so long we are arresting a person, all these things and all, but after the Supreme Court order, State of West Bengal versus D.K. Basu, D.K. Basu versus State of West Bengal, after this judgment, every law enforcing agency of the country have given a sort of guidelines departmentally how to 
activate in uh, processing the arrest memo. There is no format as such. I don't know, you have a format of arrest memo? Yes, sir. Do you have? Yes, sir. Okay. Maybe you have processed. But so many departments I have asked that they don't have really format. But statute also there is no format. In the statute also there is no format, recognized format. So these are the datas should be in any language but it should be available in your arrest memo. Like brief facts, details of the person, gist of evidence, in a small way, not das pata ka, ek paragraph mein. Aap chota, jab school patte tha, patte the ho, aap pressy writing likha hai? Pressy writing? Pressy writing mein hundreds and hundred min la chahiye. Is mein jab arrest memo likhe ga. All these points has been written after examination of different court's observation and rejection or acceptance of arrest memo. It's a very hard trial we made. <clears throat> now CRPC ka, there are certain provisions, particular provisions of arrest. Kaise karega, kiu karega, ka, kis kile karega, all these sections has been synopsized and put into this slide just for arrest case. Because this I feel that for police officer is very much important. Now this is also important because every time we lecture reasons to believe, reasons to believe. But we really don't put in black and white what is reasons to believe. And what is the available evidence of reasons to believe? This is the judgment. Pratap Singh versus Enforcement Directorate, 1985, Supreme Court. You follow this kindly. Once you follow this, reasons to believe, very important. I give you one. In Kolkata, fancy market was there. Fancy market me in those days when I was a junior officer. Um, us time I'm um, field officer hoke, junior officer hoke, charge team me jata tha. Charge party me jata tha. To udhar me us time me import export regulation was very strict. And us me t-shirt agara bohut jo smuggle hota hai aur udhar me bikiri hota tha. And us time me t-shirt agara consumables were not allowed uh, duty free. And were not allowed uh, without license. Restriction tha, 85, 88, yeah, import export policy mein. To us mein kya hota tha? Smugglers used to bring the t-shirts and all across the border, in bags and all. And what they used to do to avoid seizure, they used to cut the labels. Oh, jo made in Bangkok, made in Thailand, made in USA, oh, label cut ke rakta hai. Thik hai. So that customs officer could not find the reason to believe or could not seize it. Direct evidence, oh, oh seize bhi karega, to ultimately hum high court se chhoda lega. E matlab uska aisa hi idea tha. <coughs> to hum log search karta tha and I was making, we are making inventory and all. Boss aaya hai, boss bola, seal kiyo hai sab seize karta hai, isme kya hai? Hum bola sab, e sab, humko pata hai, e Thailand se hota hai, Thailand ka hai. <coughs> to, नहीं नहीं इसको मार्क्स नंबर्स नहीं है क्यों सीज करते हैं गोडाउन में जागा नहीं होगा क्या हम बोला सब सीज करिए हम एग्जाम हम इन्वेस्टिगेट करके दिखा दो तो देखिए इसमें जब वो बोला है हम व्हाट आई स्पोक टू माय बॉस दैट्स इन इम्पोर्टेंट आई स्टिल रिमेम्बर कहे को यू नो माय माय सक्सेस लाइज बिकॉज don't be, don't have a transparency. <coughs> I told him, I told my boss, sir, you are telling me not to seize, but let me, you allow me to seize. Why? Because I will investigate and prove that this is made of foreign origin. Then he said, what is your reasonable belief? I said, sir, <coughs> I worked in airport for five years. While I was in a baggage, I saw People coming from outside country, they used to bring similar t-shirt, similar things from Thailand. 
This is my reasons to believe. This is my reasons to believe. I remember the boss says, thank you, Sil. So, this is what is reasons to believe. Reasons to believe is a subjective satisfaction of the seizing officer, not anybody else. And that is why Panchanama Me High Court has observed very good thing that it should indicate the signature of the seizing officer indicating his reasons to believe what I have already shown in your last slides. Correctly, High Court has observed. So, reasons to believe is the individual seizing officers or detaining officers belief. It cannot be challenged. But, law provides that court has got right to examine what? The last line. Relevant bearing for the functions of the belief and are not extraneous or irrelevant for the purpose of this section. It's not irrelevant. So, it's a Caesar. There are two words in the entire area. What is Caesar? And what is confiscation? Can the seize goods invested with the government? Tell me yes or no. Seized goods cannot be invested with the Union of India's property. Unless it is ordered for feature or confiscation. So, there is two words in the criminal technology. Number one is seizure, number two is confiscation or forfeiture. A seized goods can be forfeited or may not be forfeited. A seized goods can be confiscated or may not be confiscated. So, seizure is not against the principle of law. What is what law deserves that the seizing officer has to write that he has reasons to believe that the goods are liable to confiscation. Liable to confiscation. So somebody has to order confiscation. This is important. <clears throat> now one thing, what I thought during my lecture, because I was given about 10-15 days time that uh, to invite you to appear before you. <clears throat> I was just nurturing the observations. Now in CRPC <clears throat> it is very much written that the statement can a police officer cannot get the, take the signature in the statement. Isn't it? Am I correct? Am I correct? You are not authorized to take the signature of the statement of the person. You can file before the court, you can write, but you cannot force a person to sign the statement. Isn't it? Am I correct? Yes? Okay. Now this is against that statement. What is that statement? Person summoned to give his statement and sign it. Such a course is not prohibited either by statute or by constitution. It is desirable that such statement shall be in writing. It will safeguard the interest of both the maker and the department and eliminates the possibility of making complaint subsequently that his statement was not correctly recorded by the authority. I have given the citation also, but you can try to examine this and process it. I, it's not a must. I don't uh, tell you to really observe this, but this is just for your information. Pulpundi, Palpundi versus Superintendent of Central XI, AIA 1992, Supreme Court, three judges bench. <coughs> Verification and development of information. <clears throat> you are getting information from whom? From three sources. One is suspect, another is accused, then offender. Who is offender? You must have in the record that he has been convicted in earlier cases. So with your eye of interrogation, he is an offender. 
is already convicted earlier. So there are three areas and three areas to evaluate, to examine those three type of persons. You may follow C card methodology. C E C A R D acronyms. Acronyms. C E C A R D. Collection, evaluation, collation, analysis, reporting, dissemination. It is T I N G hobby, G hoga. Reporting, dissemination. This is the process in every situation. Apply this and you will be successful as an interrogator. Without the pro this process, information does not become intelligence. It remains a raw data. <coughs> interview. What is the difference between interview and interrogation? Because you are facing this every day. First thing you have to, uh, you have to observe that what category of the person you are questioning according to your reasons to believe, according to your report, according to your what you call diary. So this is to be observed. <coughs> A few distinctive qualities. Since I am sharing these slides, I am trying to skipping off certain barriers. Okay? Allow me to do that. A few distinctive qualities of a good interrogator, he must know the psychology of the accused. He must have a good personality, patience and objectives approach. He should have a sound memory. He must have quick adaptability. He should respond to human. human. He should have strong analytical mind. Somebody will say that, how can I be like this? You know, when you are inside the house, somebody put the calling bell. You see the keyhole, you open the gate. Your wife sees the keyhole, she does not open the keyhole. Key. Why? Why this dude? She is also human, you are also human. Same process. <clears throat> you being a police officer, you have that eyes, you have developed that eyes, you observe, so that man is not welcome in my house. Your wife is a layman, he is uh, making a decision otherwise. The decision varies from man to man. So once we are police officer, once we are interrogator, try to encourage this property which is available given by Almighty. Panchendriyo bolta hai. Aapko pata hai Panchendriyo. Five senses. <coughs> what are the five senses? You look with the eyes. You smell with your nose. You feel with your hand. You hear with your ear. And then what else? Remember. Huh? Feeling. Of feeling, seeing. Huh? साउंड ठीक है, but apply those, apply those. He is standing there, he allows that person with the arms to follow, and he is standing there, he has stopped him. He has that sense of eyes, he does not have sense of eyes. So they, I mean, he cannot be, uh, I mean, uh, so cost minded. He cannot be. It's a human nature. Somebody is very. Uh, Efficient somebody is not. That does not mean that he is not. Type of interrogation. Now these are process of interrogation. Conscious arousal. Interrogation technique. These who did, what he did, where he did, when he did, how he did, why he did. All these are there. Then according to your case record, 
process that. That's all. <clears throat> now this last line, kindly observe. The success of any interrogation depends on the pattern of all collected clues and evidences. But these clues and evidence have to be properly deducted in the appropriate context to have the right solution. Now you have received hundreds of evidences, hundreds of exhibits, but which exhibit is appropriate for your case, that is to be examined very vehemently, otherwise you lose the case. You ask a question to the interrogatee, what question you are going to put the interrogatee, that's your subject matter, not mine. Psychology of the suspect, these are according to the uh, law of the psychology. I have just noted it for your information. <clears throat> the accused psychology, witnesses psychology and now this important large, second paragraph. The social stratum of the accused has also a great bearing with the process of interrogation. We have to admit that no matter we are interrogating a definite accused, our approach needs variation in the context of his social position and stratum. A millionaire, a millionaire and meal owner gets different treatment due to our unconscious preconception. Don't take it otherwise. I am an interrogator. I will process everything without using third degree. Mind it. That's my prerogative. You can't expect that I should follow the human, human nature of the humanity. Because in my heart, I should be very soft. But in my activity, I should be very bold. Mind it. A thela wala you have caught. You are interrogating him in your sitting room, in your interrogating room. He has come. Hey, idharao, idharao. Why hai chair tan ke boi thai? Aap allow karega? Bolie. Will you allow it? No. If I am an interrogator, I will allow. I will just hey. You think this is wrong in order as per law? No. So he understood that he is very strict. If I tell lies, he is going to use third degree. Very strict officer. Samajya. This is what is psychology. This process has to be adapted very well. I applied all this material, all this psychology, and I was a successful man. A Thelawala was caught with four bundles of contraband in Barabajar, Kolkata. In the early morning, we intercepted the Thelawala. The Thelawala was brought in the custom, Thela with the goods were brought in the customer's premises. जब ठेला वाला माल उधर था, हम लोग का ऑफिस में सीआरपीएफ वो जो गार्ड होता है ना, उस टाइम में सीआरपीएफ गार्ड उधर में एक सखड़ा है गेट में, तो हम जब एंटर आपको इंचार्ज की तरह है, सीआरपीएफ साहब आपको इंचार्ज है, हाँ है, ये ठेला वाला है, ये ठीक था नहीं बोलने से आप आपको इंचार्ज को बोल I have just told the gate CRPF man like this and he followed me. So he could understand that the process he is going to ask me, he is going to adapt. If I don't follow, he is going to arrest me by the CRPF. So this is what the psychology and this is what how to handle a meal owner, mini owner cannot be tackled in the same manner. Because interrogation process 
needs a very big psychology and mind it, you are, you mind the friend police officer, your activity of interrogation is super. Why? थर्ड डिग्री Unnecessary, which is not available for your own protection. It's not your own job, not your own or spouse property. You are not gaining anything. Use psychology, use technique, because third degree it is not allowed. And once you put the third degree, <coughs> now, आजकल का technology इतना है. CCTV hai, this hai, that hai, both sare examination process hai. वो सब आ जाने से आपको अंदर करने का उसको छोड़ देगा. Why should you take that responsibility? हमको तो महीना जाने से first week में I am getting my salary. My, nobody can stop me by getting my salary. But once you process this type of unnecessary headache, you will have sleepless night. Why should you? But accept it that once you process the psychology once you process this process i am sure that you will be successful i am sure because this is actually tested skill is not untested i can give give you each and every example of these points ek admi ne aapko batata ek gold smuggler ko uska jeb se humko wo diary mila tha डायरी में क्या लिखा है उस टेम में 1000 थाउजेंड इंटू एट पॉइंट टू फाइव इज वन टू स्वयं सो एक इतना के जी इतना के जी इंटू थ्री थाउजेंड समथिंग इतना लाइक दैट उसको वेरी बिग पर्सन गोल्ड स्मगलर वो मिलियन मतलब मिलियन डॉलर प्रॉपर्टी है उसका उसको इंटरोगेट करते हैं वो बोला साहब You know I am a spice dealer. हमको बोलता हम बोला हाँ आई नो यू आर ए स्पाइस डीलर तो उसमें क्या है आपको जो जवाब दे रहा है ये आपको हैंड राइटिंग है लिखिए ये आप क्या लिखा है आप डायरेक्ट करिए वो बोला वो बोलता है ये सब आठ रुपया पचास पैसा पर किलो पर ग्राम पर के जी पर स्वयं सो ऐसा करके पूरा इतना डायरी एक दस पता का और नरेशन दिया है अलाउ हिम देन व्हाट कुड बी योर प्रोसेस ईच एंड एवरी डे आई मीन सो मेनी एक्टिविटीज आर देयर आई एम जस्ट गिविंग अ शॉर्ट ऑफ स्टो नॉट सेल देन अल्टीमेटली ड्यूरिंग एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ व्हाट रिवील रिवेलेशन के ऊपर द इंटर इन्वेस्टिगेशन हैज प्रूव बियॉन्ड डाउट दैट डेट शोन इन द डायरी when the rate of dollar was 8 rupees 50 paisa and that certification was given by reserve bank of india exchange rate reserve bank to 8.5 nahi dega reserve bank diya hai 7 rupees something and then we have quoted the intelligence process and the data is available during other processes jisme dusra case study mein aaya hai usko process karke dekha hai the the dollar this foreign exchange official rate ka upar 20% premium mein hawala chalta hai <coughs> matlab jo hai aisa aisa chalta tha us time mein according to date we have narr give the narration of what is the rate in the black market and what is the rate in the oh calculation karke dikha diya shokas mein that the percentage wise this is accepted and dhani dhaniya jeera jo bola hai uska kya price hai from the market we have calculated and we have put up all the reserve banks report the uh, spice dealers uh, quotation and different documents do you not consider that the statement given by the accused 
will be accepted as wrong statement. Bola, bolie, admissibility factor. So this requires acumen, and that acumen, I think, you have to have greater responsibility compared to other departmental officials because you are interrogating a person at first instance and on the spot of the scene of crime. And according to your uh, observation, according to your clarity, the ultimately investigation will be processed. <clears throat> Any question? Matha Dorche, Chika Che. Please accept my statement. Why I say? Not for my personal gain, but activate yourself what we discussed during your process of field work. Now, I will show you the last slide, disposal. <coughs> disposal of property during inquiry investigation trial. What is disposal? Disposal can be destruction also, by way of destruction, by way of uh, handing over, by way of release, by way of confiscation and waste to the government, by way of sale. All these are disposal. Our thin, three areas of disposal. Ek is the theme of the disposal is that you can no, you are not authorized to dispose of any of my property because you have hold my property according to the law of the country i don't mind but mind it you are not to dispose of unless you inform me unless it is under the statute and the statute prima facie will reveal that you must inform the party before disposal of the goods. And parties, kya hai? Aapko court ka order lena hai. Aapko nahi to koi ki process hai. This process has been indicated as a guideline to all the departmental officers, all the department accordingly. I have just tried to put up department-wise narration of the disposal. Uh, and I submit one thing, that disposal is a must for all affairs and this is the advantageous situation for both for the department and also by the party. <clears throat> Police scissor case covering CRPC provision, chapter 14, section 451 to 459. Most of the enforcement agencies like Customs, NCB, Police have their own SOP for the disposal of seized goods property, keeping in view that the same does not lose. Number one is evidential value of the property. Your foremost duty, why should you seize it? Why should you detain my goods? Because you felt that this will be the correct evidence could be produced as an exhibit before for the admissibility of your case. That is the priority. So, keeping that priority, the first and foremost thing that you must inform the court. My reasonable belief, my activity should be certified by the court. So, it cannot be challenged. My certification can be challenged, but court certification will not be challenged. So, in each and every situation of pre-trial or post-trial situation, get the court's order. That is called court certification order of disposal. Certain provisions are there. Customs Act provides definite sections, 110 
110 2 110 section 1102 of the customs act 1962 narcotic drugs also have certain sections specially for disposal crpc also have certain sections for disposals like that so apply those sections accordingly but very materially certification should be processed in a very standardized manner according to the flow chart given by the order of the sections of the guidelines or sections of the law but uh, steps for early disposal of different categories there are different categories perishable non perishable non dedication of uh, the value all these things are definite and accordingly it is standardized and categorized i have tried to put up the slides kindly go through the slides <coughs> this is actually how you are seizing it this is actually your seizure mostly less than 500 rupees mostly because exhibits and uncertain things so those can be sold without certification or anything but provided you keep in mind that this could be have made should could be shown even in the appeal stage so wait till the appeal order is provided wait till appellate order <clears throat> narcotics disposal mind it you are also designated and notified officer under ndps so when you go for when you talk about narcotic disposal you are definitely authorized under the statute <clears throat> that is what i have indicated most of the narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances cannot be conclusively proved to be such drugs or substances merely by visual examination in the trial court. <clears throat> they require to be proved by chemical analysis to be conducted by chemists authorized under section 293 of the CRPC. Experts opinion. Like uh, in the electronic evidence, uh, uh, this uh, forensic certification. These are actually according to 293 of the CRPC. And they have categorized as narcotic drugs and psychotropic substances. And category 451 order, that is sections I have quoted, no problem. These are actually disposable items according to the material. That is as per the law, NDPS Act has provided the scheme of scheduling the drugs. See, this is follow-up action to be taken by police and empowered officers. This is a must. So this is according to the law of the country, according to the NDPS Act 1985, mind it. <coughs> this is available in the NET also, even available in the NDPS Act book also. Certifying the correctness by the magistrate. This I have been telling you off and on. That is a must. And the process of certification, uh, like draw the sample, sample should be sealed, same like goods should be certified by the first thing your document, document, search list, punch nama, goods, material exhibit, everything needs to be put sealed and all by the magistrate's office. <coughs> where an application are made under section 2 of the 52A course that to treat the documents and list of samples certified by magistrate as primary evidence. So this is as per the law. Court certification, primary evidence lene parega. Court court. They cannot avoid it. <coughs> Now, while moving the court for 52A uh, as above, all seized articles, drugs along with punch number to be shown to the court. Normally, kya hota? 
court appoints somebody and they come and inspect our go down, give a certification and then segregate the sample, this thing and all, whatever the fun functions, they do it and accordingly it is done. Disposal and customs. Customs ka disposal, both different categories hota hai. This is what I have narrated. There are categories of different like that. Seized goods, confiscated goods, uncleared goods, unclaimed goods, detained goods. These are process. Now if, now there is a provision under the law that if certain activities are not available in your situation, in your acts, under the General Clauses Act, you can drag other acts which are available in the statutes. Conditions and procedures. You can adapt that. This is under General Clauses Act. <coughs> Category 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. And they, these are absolutely notified. You can get, even from the NATO also, list of goods. <coughs> I have been, I told also, notice to the owner is a must. It is the principle of natural justice. Partial disposal can be made by keeping the sample. This is available under 451 of CRPC. <coughs> now friend, overall, if you have any question, I leave it on the floor to ask me, but provided it should be in my domain according to my presentation. Yes. <clears throat> I can't part with this and <clears throat>